What is the most creepy, unexplained event that has happened in your life, posted one day ago? Me, my boss, and a coworker were standing at the surface table measuring something when the quarter-ton table moved about six inches at one corner across the concrete floor with a loud screech like someone had grabbed it and moved it out of the way. We just looked at each other like, did that just happen? My uncle used to have a cabin in the woods near Winter, Wisconsin on a relatively undeveloped arm of the Chippewa Flowage. Not too remote that you couldn't pop into town for necessities, but far enough in the boonies that if you got hurt, you'd be in serious trouble. I used to spend time there in the summer, tearing through the woods with my two cousins. One morning, when I was about 10, my uncle woke us up roughly and told us it was time to go fishing. It was still super early and we were all confused because it was pitch dark and who the hell went fishing so early anyway? He hustled us down to the dock where he kept his little fishing boat and quickly launched us into the water and away from the house. At this point, we were all getting a little freaked out by the weirdness of the situation. We thought maybe we were being punished because my uncle had gone to chop wood the previous morning and couldn't find his axe anywhere. He'd left it lodged in a stump next to the cabin and accused us of messing with it, which, to be fair, sounded like something we probably would have done. He ended up having to drive into town to buy a new one. He wasn't talking, though. We just sat, shivering under a blanket at the bow of the boat while my uncle stared wild-eyed at the shoreline and waved a flashlight furtively ahead of us. We eventually arrived at my uncle's friend's cabin across the lake and tumbled into his house. Our uncle sent us to the loft to sleep, and he and his buddy locked the doors and left, not returning until well after sunrise. Eventually, our uncle showed up with the truck and trailer already packed with all of our gear and told us it was time to go home. We all thought it was weird that we were leaving the cabin days early, but we were kids, so we just went with it. My uncle was quiet for the whole long drive back to civilization. Many years later, my uncle confirmed to me that the reason he'd hustled us home was because he'd woken up at around 3 a.m. to a strange thuck, thuck, thuck sound from outside the cabin. He'd gone out to investigate when a massive jack pine fell directly across the narrow driveway, blocking us in. Startled by the noise, he swept his flashlight along the tree line just in time to see a man holding an axe slink away into the dark of the wood. He and his buddy had to take turns chainsawing the tree apart while the other stood watch with a rifle. He never found the axe. From my old account, driving in rural areas in New England near the borders of Vermont and Massachusetts, so I'm not sure which one I was in. It was late. Well, okay. So late it was actually early, and there was fog. Dense, dense fog. Like Silent Hill levels of fog. And like an idiot who dies in the opening scene of a horror movie, I'm driving on back roads. First, my headlights just up and go out. Cannot use high beams because of fog. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I haven't seen a house or town in a long time. Car starts making noise. Check engine light comes on. So I pull over. Nothing much around. Field and fog and dark. Creepy as hell. I gamely look at the engine. I can fix electronics, not engines. I tighten all the things I know. Car now won't start. So I'm in the dark, in the middle of nowhere, on the side of the road. Because of the natural rules of how things work, my cell phone has no service as well. It is like one big cliche, but I'm not stupid enough to go wandering the roads right now. So I recline my seat and decide to take a nap for a couple of hours until the sun comes up. I wake up, the sun is coming up, the fog is going away, and I am on the main street of a tiny town parked in front of what looks like the Bates Motel House. Houses everywhere. It was the creepiest feeling. I was sure I'm off in the woods. There was not a light on any house all night. There was a service station 50 yards up the road. I walked up to it, talked to the guy who looked perfectly normal. He walked over to look at the car, asked me to try and start it, and it did. Fucking thing turned over right away, and both headlights were working. I drove on, never got the name of the little village, and I couldn't find it on a map. I always felt like I was in this big setup for a horror movie that just didn't pan out. I saw a guy accidentally drop a 16-inch concrete drill bit from shoulder height. It never hit the ground, it's like it stopped existing on its way to the floor. No sound of it hitting the floor, nowhere to go, just gone. Three witnesses all saw the same thing. This happened in a completely empty, newly constructed building. Hallway was tiled, walls were cinder block, newly installed drop ceiling. We had to fill out a missing tool report, got written up for it, had to search the entire building top to bottom for hours. I'm a very skeptical person. I can't come up with any reasonable explanation for it. Still think about it when questions like this come up. Sometimes things can just disappear, I guess. This didn't happen to me, but to a friend. 
He had a doctor's appointment and took his dad with him. It was in another town and about an hour away, and since the appointment was for 11 a.m., they left at 9.30 to give themselves plenty of time. They pulled into the parking lot at 10.30. My friend said he remembered checking the clock in the car when they arrived and remarking to his dad that they made good time. They went into the office, and the receptionist pointed out that they were a little late, but that it was okay because the doctor was running behind. My friend told her that he had an 11 o'clock appointment and that he was actually a half hour early and she pointed to the clock on the waiting room wall, which said 11.15. His dad checked his watch, 11.15. My friend ran out and checked the clock in the car, 11.15. Somehow, in a few dozen steps from the car to the office, they'd lost 45 minutes. When they got home, my friend's mom verified that they'd left home at 9.30, and there hadn't been heavy traffic or delays of any kind. It's a mystery to this day. One time when I was younger, I was upstairs in my room playing some games on a PlayStation. I was home alone because both of my parents had gone out to see a movie. It was a fairly normal night with nothing out of the ordinary happening until I heard an extremely loud crashing noise and what sounded like glass shattering coming from the kitchen area. I immediately went downstairs to try and see the source of the noise. I checked all of the windows and showed no signs of damage. Confused, I kept walking around trying to find the source of this loud crashing noise until I walked over to the kitchen. I don't know how this happened, but apparently the outer glass screen of our oven just completely fell off and shattered. Slightly terrified, I proceeded to sweep up all of the glass and throw it away. I tried explaining the situation to my parents when they got home, but they didn't believe my story and grounded me for a week because they thought I broke it. To this day, I still have no clue what caused the oven screen door to shatter like that, and it's one of the biggest unexplained mysteries in my life. My dad and stepmother got married when I was 10 years old at a countryside estate which is now a wedding venue. The other kids and I were playing hide and seek in this massive house, every kid's dream, when my sister, 12 at the time, was chasing my younger cousin, 7 at the time, who had long blonde hair wearing a blue dress down a long hallway. Halfway down the hallway, the younger cousin dips into an old spiral staircase that only goes up a quarter rotation before it's blocked off with a wall. My sister jumps around the corner and shouts, gotcha! except nobody was in the block staircase. She runs back to my dad crying, saying that her cousin disappeared through a wall, and everyone laughed it off because said cousin was right next to her. Fast forward five years. I'm 15 and I get a job as a waiter at the same wedding venue. The estate has an RNG, which is where they hold the ceremonies, and I notice a small stained glass window depicting a blonde haired girl wearing a blue dress with the dates 1931 to 1937 underneath her. Naturally, I'm dumbfounded, so I ask about the stained glass window. The venue manager tells me that after being sold by the original owner, the estate was a boarding school for girls. She tells me that a young girl fell out of a top floor window and sadly passed away. The hallway that my sister chased my cousin down was an old servant's hallway, and the staircase was the central staircase that leads directly up to the old girl's dormitories on the top floor. Spooky. Learned a lot about the house during my five years working there. Nothing else spooky, but plenty that is very, very interesting. Weirdest thing I've ever experienced. I live in a small town, and it takes three hours and four mountain passes to get to the nearest city. Pre-COVID, I made that drive two to three times a month over a period of 10 years. I pretty much had the curves and climbs committed to memory. One night, I'm making the drive at 2 a.m. to catch an early flight, cruising the curves and enjoying the lack of semi-trucks. Left curve, right curve, No, there's a big sweeping curve to the left coming up when all of a sudden I'm driving on a straight road. I'm well aware that there isn't a straight section on that highway for another 30 miles. So immediately, I'm looking around trying to figure out where the hell I am. Not a single highway sign on the side of the road. Smack myself a few times to make sure I hadn't fallen asleep. Phone has no service, but that's normal, so I can't check my location. Looking out the window, I realize the high desert scrub trees have been replaced with a thick forest. Imagine your headlights pick up dark, heavy, can't see 10 feet forest that I would imagine in the Pacific Northwest, something that we don't have here. I'm looking at the clock and for 15 minutes, I'm driving on a straight road through this ominous dark forest when I should be on a curvy mountain pass in the desert. Right about the time I'm going to have a full on panic attack, the sweeping left curve appears and I'm out of the forest back in the scrub. So I chalked it up to drowsy driving and an overactive imagination until it happened again. Two years later, same spot, except this time I'm not alone. I had my brother riding shotgun on a similar airport run and all of a sudden I'm on the straight road. 
That time had only lasted about five minutes before my brother looked around and asked, where the hell are we? Cue the sweeping left curve appearing and back in the desert. Even though I can't explain it, I'm at least grateful I had a witness. I work for a funeral company. One afternoon, I did a viewing for a man who was having his funeral the next day. Usually at the end of the day, we put the bodies back in the fridge, but because we'd been really busy and I was a small branch, we only had a very small fridge and it was already full. So on the rare occasion, if they've been embalmed, we'll leave them in the chapel with the air conditioner cranked up because we have good security systems and who wants to break into a funeral home anyway? So the next morning, I'm the first one in and I walk into the chapel and the man is out of his coffin laying face down on the floor. Not sprawled, but perfectly neat, like he'd floated up out of his coffin, turned face down and floated down to the ground. Obviously, I had a heart attack and my first thought was someone had broken in and done this or were staff members playing a prank, a very sackable prank, and I can't imagine any of our staff doing that for any reason. And what's more, we have security cameras and motion detectors and swipe cards so you can see who has come and gone, but there was nothing. According to the security, no one came in or left that night. Unfortunately or fortunately, we don't have security cameras in the chapel. And if you're thinking the guy wasn't really dead, I'm not in a third world country. He was dead. He had been embalmed. You don't tend to survive an embalming. So yeah, it was a massive investigation and no one could explain how he ended up like that. It still gives me the creeps every time I go in there. A buddy picked me up to go to a couple bars, have a few drinks and whatnot. Everything was fine. I had a nice little drunk going on. Around 11 p.m. I went outside to smoke a stogie. Then boom, I woke up at my house in my bed the following morning. I don't recall even leaving the bar, let alone how I returned home. I had multiple missed calls from my buddy, called him up to see what happened, and he said I just disappeared. The creepy part is, after I got off the phone with him, I went to the restroom to realize some way, somehow, during this time I went MIA, I had received a haircut and someone shaved my face. Hmm, weird. I do my business, only to realize my wiggly bits had been groomed as well, with expertise precision I must add, not a missed hair nick or cut. Still to this day, don't know what happened, but upon sharing the story with other friends, I was spotted at other bars throughout the night, pre-haircut and alone. When I was about 15, I was home alone in my house at night. It was just me and my three dogs. My dogs were normally very lazy at night. All they would do is lay in their dog beds, chilling out until bedtime. But for some reason on this night, they all became very agitated at the same time. They all kept running into different rooms in my house and growled and barked at empty corners, something that they had never done before or since. I checked the whole house and never found anything. I don't believe in anything supernatural, but that night I slept in my parents' bedroom with the door locked, a gun next to me, and all three dogs on the bed with me. When I was 13, I had a weird flash of a nightmare while asleep. All I remembered was kneeling on asphalt and holding my hand to my mouth in the worst pain of my life. I told my mom about the dream because it scared me so much. Two years later, I was hit by a car while crossing the street and ended up in that exact position, kneeling on asphalt holding my mouth while blood poured out. My head had apparently bounced off the rearview mirror and that had knocked my two front teeth back into my soft palate. I didn't remember the dream, but my mom did, and it really fucked with her. I don't believe in premonitions, but I often wonder if maybe traumatic events can echo somehow through time. My mother died of cancer when I was a little over 30. She got a stroke on a day I was very busy at school, so my last words to her that she could understand were, Mom, not now. I'll call you later. Two hours later, she was admitted to a hospital and never woke up again. Half a year later, I had minor surgery, but because of the pain, I was given morphine. I was in the hospital bed when my mom came in, took a seat next to my bed, and we talked for an hour. It was so extremely real. I felt her touch on my hand, and we had a very good conversation. I got to know about morphine only a month later when I received the bill. Till then, I was sure it wasn't a hallucination and I started rethinking my opinion about the possibility of an afterlife. I miss her so fucking much. I'd take a shot when I know she'd come to visit me again. About 10 years ago, I was sitting in my room and I heard my doorknob slowly turning. I thought it was my dad seeing if I was napping and trying to be quiet. I watched the knob turn and heard the springs and the mechanism squeaking and then the sound of the latch slide off the metal plate as it was pushed open a bit, and I sat up to greet my dad and asked what he needed. I didn't see anyone, 
and then the door moved like it was pushed again and it opened more, only for me to clearly see my dad in the living room sitting on the couch. This was so significant to me that I wrote down the time and exactly what happened. I didn't keep a diary or anything like that, I just couldn't explain it. The door was shut all the way and latched properly, and the air kicking on or another door opening would have sucked the door shut, as it had many times before. At the time, I was also seeing a shadow figure peer around my doorframe, about six feet tall, solid black, all of my family is like five, seven or under, and very white, and the side it peeked from was about three inches from the doorframe to the wall. No one could fit there, and it would just stare at me in my bed, leaning in and out of view. Don't remember if I had posted this before, but it was when my hubby was sick and I had to travel to another city to take care of him. He traveled to another city for work, which wasn't that far from where we lived, and he was staying at his uncle's condo. My hubby is one who tries to power through everything, so when he called me and said he needed me, I went. I arrived at the condo and found him in the living room, asleep, so I go to gently wake him up and let him know I arrived. He gets up rather quickly, and with his eyes closed, he begins to talk. He says they don't like him, and they've been hurting him. I asked him who is they, and he said the ones that stay there. I don't know why or how he's talking to me, because he's not awake, and it's starting to freak me out. So I ask who is they, and he said the ghosts. I said there's no such thing as ghosts, but then he gets excited and says they are here. Before I can ask another question, he says the lights will go off, letting us know they aren't happy with me there. Sure enough, the lights in the living room turned off and everywhere downstairs. I'm thinking... WTF is going on. My hubby then goes back down and starts sleeping. I stayed the night with him and he talked on and off again without opening his eyes, saying they pushed him down the stairs and made his clothes fly out of the closet. I tried to sleep but kept having weird dreams of an Asian family looking at me from the stairs. Finally, morning comes, my hubby wakes up and asks, what am I doing there? I said, you called me and asked me to come here because you didn't feel good. He said he didn't remember calling me or the conversation he was having. A weird fucking night. I asked that he not stay there anymore, and he didn't. 